Oh my god, hi! Hi everybody, welcome back to Queer Comics. It is the first video of the new year. Happy New Year! It's January 1st. How did we get here? Nobody knows. You kids today are getting the full bedhead experience. Nikki Nesrala just woke up. Take it all in, motherfuckers. I'm sitting next to this window because it provides me with a nice angelic light so you don't see all my flaws. I don't have any flaws. Listen, first of all, I want to say a big thank you and a bit a beautiful farewell to Vicky Licks, our fearless leader and the goddess who runs the Queer Comics YouTube channel. Thank you so much, Vicky Licks, for providing us with this forum, and, uh, and, and hopefully we'll see you soon with more videos, because I, I miss your videos already. All right, let's get down to my New Year's topic, which is top 10 events that happened to me in 2015. It was a landmark fucking year for me. Like, people who say this is going to be their year, this was absolutely my year. And I am absolutely frightened for 2016 because I think it's all downhill from here. Here's some amazing, amazing, exciting things that happened to me. Number one, winning some fantastic comedy performance competitions. The first one that I won was in January with a partner, Nadine Jury. We performed in Dancing with the Comedians at Comedy Bar, and we slayed and won with a rousing salsa number where we both wore ballroom gowns. Then in June, I competed in Lipstick, the lip sync battle, and I won when I did my Mariah Carey lead the way from Glitter, and I popped out a baby on the high note. And then in September at Just for Laughs, 42, uh, competed again in the All-Stars competition, and I won that one with my Big Dream Girls performance. Number two. Panacea, a comedy group that I love and I'm involved with. It's me and three friends, Marshall Lorenzo, Jillian Bartolucci, and Alana Riach. Uh, we put on our very first sketch comedy review back in January, which ended up getting five ends from Now Magazine. And then we did a brand new show in November called Fuck It. And that one, again, garnered a lot of great reviews, well, tweets. Um, and we ended up making it on two different top 10 comedy shows of 2015 lists. Our first show in January made it into Now Magazine's top 10 list, and then our second show made it into the Torontoist list, which was very nice. Thank you, Glenn Sumi and Steve Fisher, for all the love you've given us this year. Number three, festivals. I performed in many festivals this year, the first one being the, uh, the Toronto Musical Improv Festival which was fucking awesome. I did five performances, and including the premiere of me and Nadine Jury's um, Nikki, Nikki and Nadine, which is based on the last five years. It's an improvised version of the musical The Last Five Years, which is fucking crazy, if you know what I'm talking about. Then Panacea performed at Toronto Sketch Fest, and I also did um, my uh, solo, my first, very first solo sketch show, and it was super scary, and I did okay, and it was awesome. Also performed at Montreal Sketch Fest, and then uh, there was the Fringe Festival where I produced uh, my comedy partner Marshall Lorenzo's show, uh, Everyone Loves Marine Land, which ended up having a lot of controversy surrounding it because we got a cease and desist and we had to call it Everyone Loves Sea Land, and people hated our show, but we loved our show, uh, so no, it was a crazy, crazy time. Number four, biography. Listen, I have a business. I started teaching Beyonce dance classes to my friends just for fun, and then all of a sudden, one day, a blogger, StyleDemocracy.com, God bless you people at StyleDemocracy.com, I don't know how or why you did this, but they posted an article called You Can Now Take Beyonce Dance Classes in Toronto. I just happened to know all the choreography. And then the people came. I went from having one student one week to the next week, 26, to the next week, 53. So uh, my classes expanded. I went from one class a week to, in August, I was running nine classes a week in three different cities. My business is still going strong, and it's insane that I'm making a living off of teaching something that I love, which is Beyonce's choreography, to people who aren't necessarily dancers. And what I wasn't expecting out of all of this was for um, the people to tell me that, that, that this has changed their lives and that they uh, had a really rough year. Um, and and coming to these classes has really upped their confidence and, and, and given them something to look forward to each week. 
So I, I've gotten a lot of people out of a rut inadvertently, and it's pretty humbling and fucking awesome. So go biography. Take a class, biography.com. Number five. Commercial. I, bu I booked a commercial in August, and it would, if you were listening, uh, I was teaching nine classes a week in August in three different cities. So I went to audition for this commercial for a cruise line, for Carnival Cruises, and uh, the contract made you leave town for a week. And I was like, of course, I'm I walked into the audition thing. I'm, I'm going to book this because it's an inconvenience. And I'm going to have to drop a lot of things and lose a lot of money to film this commercial. So I ended up booking it, of course. The commercial films in Mexico. Luckily, I didn't have to go on the cruise like everybody else, which who they all left on the Friday and then ended up in Mexico on the Thursday. I just flew down to Mexico on the Wednesday shot on Thursday, left on Friday. So I only had to be out for three days. I didn't have to lose a lot of money from dropping my classes. Um, and exciting thing is uh, I got to spend an entire day on the beach by myself in the middle of the busiest month of my life. I had no idea how much I needed that. I'd always been against resorts and all-inclusives. I always thought they were the dumbest idea, and I hate the outdoors, and I hate heat. But... Fuck, I needed that, and it, oh, that experience was just, it was the quickest and the most, that's probably the thing that's impacted me the most all year long, was, wow, I can do nothing, and that's nice. Number six, uh, travel. I took a lot of amazing trips this year as well. I went down to the West Coast in September. I took three weeks off. And I went to Vancouver, Victoria, Seattle, drove down to Portland and San Francisco, and it was incredible. I saw a lot of amazing friends. I didn't realize how many friends I had on the West Coast, but I did. I had the best time of my life. The, it was so good. It was, do it. Drive down the coast, please, please. And number seven, probably, uh, the Confidential Musical Theater Project. I threw my name in the hat, and I got picked I did a show. It was really scary. I had to play a choreographer in The Goodbye Girl. I got to perform next to, to Tom Allison. Uh, I uh, had to lead a dance number and uh, that no one knew what was going on because we had no rehearsals. The Confidential Musical Theater Project, in case you don't know, is where you get cast in a musical. You're assigned the musical. You're not allowed to say what it is. The audience shows up not knowing what they're going to see. The, audi the cast does not know who, who the other person, like we don't know who, our, who else is in the cast. And uh, we perform a musical with no rehearsals. We had to rehearse on our own in our living rooms. So it was really effing scary. And I did some screw-ups. It was thrilling. I haven't done a musical in years. And it was, it was, it was good. It's good. Number... Where am I? Eight... Queer comics, this video, this vlog thing. Thank you. I, I'm thank you for watching this, and uh, thank you for providing me with an outlet to to say things out of my mouth. I've loved this experience, and I can't wait to continue in 2016. Be with us. Number nine, Newman Enterprises. My cat died this year. You saw him in the first video, not the orange one, but the white one. Yeah, health problems. Things, he was only three years old and things went sour and I had to let him go right before opening another show. I like literally had a dress rehearsal, went to the hospital, held him while they put him down, cried my eyes out, went to another rehearsal and then opened the show the next day. It was a time in my life. And I'm very sad and also very overwhelmed at the amount of messages I've gotten over it um, on Facebook and, and Instagram. People have been very responsive. And a beautiful thing is a few people have actually made donations in his name to animal shelters and stuff. So thank you to those people who have done that. Number 10. I'm there. I'm at the end. Uh, number 10 is... Oh. So about a month ago, my uh, I went on Instagram and found out that my ex got married, which was hard, especially because I wasn't completely over it, and it has already been three years now. Uh, but the most beautiful thing is that, like, I had a glass of wine that night, and I don't drink, so it felt real good. And then the next day, I kind of let it go, and it was the closure I needed because it was a... It, it was just a message to me that I wasn't the one. It wasn't me. I'm not the one for him. And that's okay. People break up all the time. Everybody has a breakup at some point. 
And no, they're not easy. But I take some comfort in knowing that we're not all meant to be with the person that we love. And sure, he's the only person I've ever loved, but I mean, maybe he didn't love me the same way. And that's okay, because there's someone else out there. I mean, it took me 31 fucking years to find him. So who the hell knows when I'm going to find the next one. But these things don't come easy. You just got to roll with it. So that's my top 10 list for 2015. What a goddamn year. What a goddamn year it's been. So what's happening in 2016? What are we going to do? I have a New Year's resolution, which I normally don't make, but this year my New Year's resolution is to adult. I want to adult. I want to be a human. Now that I have some sort of business going, I want to, like, make this happen. I've got plans for my business. I have, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and get my finances in order because I'm no good at that kind of thing. Food, ha I want to get healthy. I'm very lethargic all the time. If I'm not moving, I'm passed out. So uh, I'm talking to a friend of mine about helping me with my food issues. Not, I don't eat properly. I eat pizza all the time, and that's fun, but probably not good. I need to get healthy. I'm go to the, going to the gym is a thing that's going to happen more often. And I have other aspirations, things I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to keep my brain active. Uh, good things to do for your brain are, are to use things. You use your fingers a lot. So I want to try and pick up a piano, or learn the violin is a thing I want to learn. Um, reading is a thing I want to do. I, I've, I'm going to be. I'm. It's going to be the year of the bio biography. I'm going to read a lot of people's autobiographies and biographies. There's some really good ones out there. Jim Henson, Esther Williams, I hear there's some amazing ones out there. So I'm looking forward to reading those this year. And I also want to learn Arabic because I am and I don't speak it. And uh, I think it would be cool to just pick that up, man. So hopefully uh, 2016 is going to bring a lot of good, smart things my way. And I'll be a goddamn adult. What about you? What do you want to do this year? What do you want to accomplish? It's the first day of the year. Don't be dumb dumb. I will see you all soon. Very, very soon. I have no idea what the plans are for the rest of the year with this channel. Gassy. But uh, I know that we'll be here and hopefully so will you. Okay, babes. I love you. Bye. Class looks like a lot of fun. Okay, so when we were leaving the class, he was actually going to do a class. It's a two-hour session. And the stream of people that was coming up the yeah. stairs, unbelievable. His classes are sold out. We're going to have a link to Nikki's class on our website. He's awesome. Nikki, I thank you. I couldn't dance like that in those shoes. Neither can and I. he can? No, the, and he can. And, so and you know what? He's, he's a different man once the shoes go on. He's <laughs> he hilarious. It's like he just becomes this thing. And I went, keep the heels on because it's good.